بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم. So inshallah in this audio clip we will discuss a little bit about the tafsir of Surah Al Imran, which is the third surah in the Quran. So Surah Al Imran, uh, the name comes from the family of Imran. So Imran was the father of Maryam رضي الله عنها, who was the mother of Isa عليه الصلاة والسلام. So the family of Maryam رضي الله عنها. This is where the name comes from. So in it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Isa alayhi salatu wasalam and his mother and their family and to remove all the doubts, expel all the doubts that the Christians had raised with regards to the aqidah and belief in uh, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam and his mother and their family. So anyways, this surah is a surah, a madani surah and being a madani surah, it has many ahkam of legislation, many rulings of legislation. But there are two integral, we can say, pillars or components of this surah. One is the integral component of aqidah, belief, and to establish proofs of, upon the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And with, with regards to this component, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spends a great chunk of the Qur'an expelling and dismissing the doubts that the Christians had, or the misbeliefs that they had with regards to uh, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, and his mother, and so on and so forth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about that. And these ayat were revealed after a delegation of Christians from Najran had come and there were 60 people. And their whole discussion ensued, ensued between them and Rasulullah sallallahu in which Rasulullah sallallahu dismissed all of their doubts. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in response to all of their doubts and their misbeliefs uh, more than 80 ayat from the surah. The second component of the surah was, is with regards to the Shari Ahkam specifically related to Maghazi and striving in the path of Allah, striving, fighting in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, campaigning in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses the Ghazwa, the campaign of Badr, and the Ghazwa of Uhud, and the lessons that the Muslims they learned from these campaigns. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about that. With regards to the virtue of the surah, there's a hadith from Nawaz bin Sam'an radiallahu who relates that he heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioning on the day of Qiyamah the Quran will be brought to you the Yawm al Qiyamati bil Quran wa ahlihi alladhina kanu ya'maluna bihi and the people that practice upon the Qur'an will also be brought. And those, the surahs that will be at the forefront of the Qur'an that will come on the Day of Judgment, Allah knows best how this will happen, the qualitative description of it. Allah Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, تَقْدَمُهُمْ سُورَةُ الْبَقْرَةُ وَآلُ عِمْرَانِ That at the forefront of the Qur'an that will be brought on the Day of Judgment will be Surah Baqarah and Al Imran. And likewise, the people practicing on them, the people that recited them frequently, upheld these surahs, fulfilled the rights of these surahs. They will be with these, with these surahs. So we are not going to get into every single verse of the surah. I just wanted to discuss a couple of verses of the surah. So the first verse I wanted to discuss is verse number 14. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in, in this verse, زُيَّنَ لِلنَّاسِ حُبُّ الشَّهَوَاتِ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ وَالْبَنِينَ وَالْقَنَاطِيرِ الْمُقَنْطَرَةِ مِنَ الذَّهَبِ وَالْفِضَّةِ وَالْخَيْرِ الْمُسَوَّمَةِ وَالْأَنْعَامِ وَالْحَرْفِ ذَلِكَ مَتَعُوا الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَاللَّهُ عِنْدَهُ حُسْنُ الْمَآبِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in this verse, that beautified for mankind is the love for pleasures and desires. This has been beautified for mankind. Meaning the souls of mankind, they have an inclination to these desires. This has been beautified and made appealing to them. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lists a number of these desires. The first being women. Min nisai Why, ulama mentioned in the tafasir, why women? Because the fitna of women will be the greatest of fitnas with regards to the fitna and the test that can that a person a man can be afflicted with in terms of other things of this world the fitna of the of women will be great the hadith on the peace of mentions that an-nisa'u haba'ilu shaytan that the women are the traps and the snares of shayateen it doesn't mean that every woman is evil it just means that that shaytan can easily more easily manipulate women to misguide people and to take people away from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Hadith of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Hadith of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that I have not left a fitna, a test, and a trial after me what is more harmful to men than women. So the fitna of women, uh, so the love and the, the, the love and the, um, the pleasure and the desire for women, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala mentions first. That this has been beautified for mankind naturally. This is a natural test from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. This is the meaning. Then Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala mentions the second test, walbanin, that children, children are a result of having relationships with women. So. In one in a narration, one hadith, in one narration, it comes that al awlad majbanatun that children 
are a means for a person to become cowardly and for a means for a person to become stingy. So when, when a person has children, then all of a sudden now he might start becoming stingy with regards to spending on poor, poor people and other avenues of good because now he's thinking, oh, I have to save up for my kids. And majbanatun, it's a weak point for man that when a man, he doesn't have children and then doesn't have other people to be responsible for, then he feels that he's very brave and strong and he's not worried about going into danger. He's not worried about, you know, taking a risk. But now when he feels that he's responsible for other dependent small children that he's leaving behind, now he's thinking, oh, if something happens to me, then what's going to happen to these kids? So now it makes him cowardly. So this is that second test. Al-Banin. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَالْقَنَاطِيرِ الْمُقَنْطَرَةِ مِنَ الذَّهْبِ وَالْفِضَّةِ that great heaps of wealth in the form of gold and silver. So because normally a person's, uh, a person's love for his children and woman is greater than a person's love for his wealth, so therefore Allah SWT lists the wealth at the third number, number three. And this love for wealth Allah talks about in other surahs also like Allah mentions in Surah Al-Adiyat. إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لِحُبِّ الْخَيْرِ لَشَدِيدٍ Really, insan, his love for wealth is very, very intense. So this is the third. The third test is great heaps of wealth, gold and silver and all kinds of money and other precious things of this world. And this love for wealth is many times intoxicates a person and becomes such a great test that it makes him completely oblivious of everything else, what is after death, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what are the dictates of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what are the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a person is not, doesn't care about anything, whether it comes from halal means or haram means, how a person spends his wealth, he doesn't care, he's just after that wealth. This is a, big, this is a test. Thereafter Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, wal khayr al-musawwamati, that branded pedigreed horses. So basically we can say commodities of that are like collectibles, very vintage items. You know, some people have this hobby and this passion of amassing things that are very, very antique, very, very unique, very, very rare in the world, like paintings and things like that. Branded pedigreed horses. You know, like something that there's a very little amount of in the world and people have the desire for that. So this this makes a person negligent. This make this becomes a test for a person. You know, antiques and rarities in the world to try to uh, amass and collect these kind of things. One an'ami wal harf, one an'am livestock, like cows and goats and camels, all of the things, because there's a means for food, a means of conveyance and transportation, and a means of beautif beautifying a person in these things. So this, be this becomes a test. A person has love for these things. Like this is a source of wealth for a person himself. Wal an'ami wal harf, and plantations, crops, fruits and trees and vegetables and all kinds of things. So in this, as a person's livelihood, in the sense that a person gets his food, his basic staple diet and other source of uh, strength and medication from these things. So this becomes a test for a person because a person puts his trust in there that he, he needs to put everything, he needs to put all of his time and energy, invest all, it, all of it in, the, in, in this plantations and crops so that he can live. It takes him, it makes him unmindful about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about the hereafter. These things are the pleasures or the things that are taken benefit from the enjoyments of the, world, of the life of this world. These are things of the life of this world that you take benefit from. There is no doubt that there is benefit in these things. But then Allah says, Wallahu indahu husnul ma'ab. That with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most excellent place of return. That is the most excellent place. The bounties over there in Jannah, there is no comparison. There is no comparison of those bounties with anything in this world. No comparison absolutely whatsoever. There is no comparison of the women in Jannah with the women in this world. There is no comparison of the uh, fruits and the things to eat in Jannah with the things in this world. There's no comparison of the animals and the rides in Jannah with the things of this world. There's no comparison of the gold and silver and the rubies and all kinds of precious stones in Jannah with the things of this world. There's absolutely, Allah says that the reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the reward which you should seek for because with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Jannah is the most excellent place of return. Is the most excellent place of return. Allah says, Say, O Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, say to mankind, shall I inform you of something which is better than all of this? Something which is better than all of the things that has been beautified, all of the desires and all of the uh, shahawat that have been beautified for man. Shall I tell you something that is better than all of these things? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, لِلَّذِينَ التَّقُوا For those people that have taqwa, for those people that fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ with their, رَبْ with their Lord will be gardens, beneath which rivers flow, تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِ جَنَّاتٌ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِ الْأَنْهَارِ For these muttaqeen, for these people of taqwa will be such things. There will be so, these gardens will be so spacious and so vast. And rivers will run through them. فيها, the people of Taqwa, the people of Jannah will live there forever. They will never leave Jannah. They will never die. Mutahara, they will have purified spouses. And that will be purified from all the things that mankind, humans, are afflicted with in this world. All the impurities that we naturally are afflicted with. There are many impurities that are excreted from our bodies. The wives, the women of Jannah will be free and pure from any of these things. And even the impurities that are spiritual, that are not physical, the impurities that are 
spiritual that are that mankind are afflicted with in this world for example the impurities of hatred and jealousy and malice and enmity all of this the women of jannah and the people of jannah will be purified from this also then allah says what is one min allahi and the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah being pleased with mankind this is the greatest this is the greatest pleasure this is the greatest bounty another ayah allah says what is one min allahi akbar the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be the greatest bounty well this will be an announcement made to the people of jannah after they have been made to enter Jannah, Allah will say in a hadith, it comes, That I now place my pleasure, my happiness with you upon you. And so therefore I will, after this, I will never become un, I will never become displeased and angry with you ever after this. Allah says, Wallahu basirun bil ibad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees his servants. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is well aware of the condition and the states of his servants. Whether they deserve punished, to be punished, whether they deserve to be rewarded. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is well aware. So, ulama mentioned when we when we talk about the ranks of the of the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the lowest of ranks is the rank of the bounties of this world. Whatever it might be, the gold, the silver, the women, you know, the foods, the delicacies, the drinks, you know, the gardens, anything, the, the beautiful sceneries. The, the lowest of the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are all in this world. The next is the bounties of Jannah. Next is the bounties of Jannah. And the last is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which we can say is also part of Jannah, but this is the highest bounty. The pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah being pleased with mankind. Thereafter, Allah says, "Alladhin yaqulun Rabbana innana amanna." Those people of taqwa they have certain qualities. Among their qualities are that they say, "Rabbana verily, O our Lord, or our Rabb, amanna." We have believed in you, in the books, in the angels, everything that you have commanded us to believe in. Faghfir lana, so forgive us, forgive our sins. Faghfir lana, dunubana. This is the qualities. These are the qualities we need to bring in our lives for us to be considered uh, to be part of the muttaqin. For us to be considered to be part of the muttaqin, we need to bring these qualities. And save us from the punishment of the fire. By your mercy, by your kindness, save us from the punishment of the fire. As-sabirin was sadiqin The people of taqwa are also those that are patient. That are patient <coughs> upon the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that are patient in, in forsaking and staying away from the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from all sins. was sadiqin That are truthful in their speech and in their actions. Their actions confirm to what they what they what they testify to with respect to what they believe so whatever is in their hearts in terms of belief that is uh, that is testified to by their speech and by their actions was sadiqin they're truthful in their iman they're truthful in their covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the first is they're patient upon all difficulties and calamities that come and upon the obedience of Allah and upon staying away from sins all of these things are included was sadiqin wal qanitin and those that are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in favorable conditions and adverse conditions whether a person likes or whether a person dislikes, they are completely obedient. Wal munfiqeen, and those that spend their wealth in avenues of good to please Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, they are not stingy and hold back and, and lose opportunities, but they capitalize on every opportunity they get to please Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to invest in the akhirah. Wal mustaghfirin bi ashab, and those that seek the forgiveness of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in the latter part of the nights, just before turu al fajr, just before the fajr time comes in, in the last part of the nights when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He readily listens to the dua supplications of His servants. They are these people. They are. They are using this time, precious, valuable time, to seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the qualities of the muttaqin. So in this month of Ramadan, especially the first ashara, we are pretty much almost pretty much done now, the first ashara. In the first ashara, the maghfirat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends abundantly on mankind. So we should be having this quality of istighfar within us, especially in the latter parts of the nights and throughout the day. When mustaghfirin abil ashab. And we should remember these ayat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that it is Jannah that we are working for. And after the month of Ramadan is completed, angels make announcements that, you know, the, the Jannah that you guys have been working for, it has been adorned and very soon you will come to this Jannah. So Allah reminds us in these ayat that it is, uh, that do not be beguiled and do not be made forgetful and unmindful by the temptations and the desires which have been made beloved to man in this world from all the things that Allah listed. But rather aspire for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has with him in terms of the excellent place of return, that is of Jannah, and the bounties therein. The next verses I wanted to discuss very briefly are the verses in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He commands us to adopt taqwa and fulfill the right of taqwa. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu taqullaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. That, O believers, all, you, all those of you who have Iman, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, adopt taqwa, be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like it is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be feared, like it is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be feared, 
and to have consciousness of him, to be aware of him at all times. What is that right of taqwa? Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu mentions, huwa ayyu ta'a fala yu'sa, that Allah is, Allah is uh, obeyed and he is not disobeyed. Huwa ayyu thkara fala yu'sa, and that he is remembered, he is not forgotten. Huwa ayyu shkara fala yu'kfar, and that he is thanked, and that he is not, unthankfulness, ungratefulness is not shown to him. Haqqa tuqatih. So, another simple way of saying this, ulama mentioned is to stay away from all kinds of sins. This is the right of taqwa that has to be fulfilled. Ittaqullahu haqqa tuqatih. Allah says, if we knew how grand Allah is, if we knew how great Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly is, then a person would not dare to do anything which would displease Allah. A person would not dare to forget Allah for a blink of an eye. A person would not dare to be unthankful, this unthankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُ مُسْلِمُونَ None of you should ever, ever die and leave this world except that he is in a state of Islam, except that he is a Muslim. Meaning hold on to Islam very, very strongly. Hold on to Islam very strongly. To the point that when death approaches you and death overtakes you, you are on the condition of Islam and you die as a Muslim. What this actually, this command is actually about is to stay steadfast on Islam because a person will die according to a person in this life. So Allah basically is telling us that make sure that you are, you are practicing Islam and so firm on Islam that when death approaches you and that is the most difficult time for a person, when shaitan, you know, he maximizes his efforts and his attacks on man, that you are... Your practicing Islam is so strong that at that crucial moment, nothing can take you away from Islam. Nothing can take you away. This is what the command is. Nothing you should die except that he is a Muslim, except that he is submissive to Allah. Thereafter, Allah says, What is the way to practice Islam? What is the way to stay steadfast on Islam? The first is what Allah already mentioned, is to fear Allah and have consciousness of Allah as is the right to have. As is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, be, to, to fear him and to have consciousness of him. Thereafter, the other thing is, hold on strongly to the rope of Allah. So the rope of Allah could either, either refer to Islam as a whole, deen as a whole, or could refer to his, his Quran, his kitab. Jami'ah, all of you together, Allah says, all of you together, meaning that have unity, confirmity, that you practice on kitab of Allah, Quran, with no dis disagreements and disputes between you. Do not have disunity and discord, like the people of the, of, of the past did, like the Jews and the Christians, that they made a mess of their religion, and they made factions, they made groups, they made sects, and they, they divided into so many different you know, different groups. Allah says, no, all of you together hold on to the book of Allah, hold on, uh, practice the book, the kitab of Allah, Quran together with unity, that all of you are practicing on deen with unity. One, one point we can understand from this is that to be able to practice Quran, to be able to uh, be steadfast on Islam, it will be necessary that there is, there is unity amongst the ummah. This will make things easy. And when there's this unity, it will become difficult to practice Islam. It will become difficult. And the other, another point we can take is, if there is no unity between you in, in understanding what is the command injunctions of Allah and in practicing, then you will lose the understanding of deen. You will lose the understanding of deen and to a point it will become unclear for you that you, you, do not, you will not be able to recognize what is haqq, what is the truth, and what is the falsehood. What is the command of Allah and what is not the command of Allah. What is the sunnah, what is not the sunnah. So be, you make the effort to have unity, make the effort to make ulama, make the rightly guided ulama your leaders and to practice, to follow them. And after Allah says, وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ Remember the favor of Allah upon you. Uh, this could specifically refer to the Aus, the, the Sahaba the, of Madinat al munawwara the Ansar, the helpers, uh, and specifically the tribes of Aus and Khazraj, which, which made up the Ansar Sahaba in Madinat al munawwara But then, then at, at large, it, it, will, it will include all of the Muslims at large after that also. Allah says, remember the favor is upon you. إِذْ كُنْتُمْ And when you were of enemies. So the Aus and Khazraj, the Ansar, before the coming of Rasulullah to Madinat al-Munawwara, they were enemies of each other, they fought each other, they had hatred for each other. Even though Aus and Khazraj were sons of one father, but enemy, enmity came, on, came in between them, to the point that their tribes fought each other for 120 years, for such a long period of time. Allah says, فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ Thereafter, Allah united, and He brought your hearts together by means of Islam. By means of Islam. فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ And He, and he, uh, made, you, he, he made you united upon Iman, upon belief. So this is a, such an important point. If we truly want is, un, unity to come in the Ummah, it will only come through Islam. It will only come through pure Tawheed, belief in the oneness of Allah. It will only come through you know, working, everyone working for the Akhirah. It will only come through the qualities of Iman. It will only come through the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu There is no other way that unity can come in the Ummah except by means of Islam. Allah united the hearts of the Sahaba. فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ And that Allah did only by His favor. And what was His favor? Ni'matullah. That was the favor of Islam through Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi If we want unity, it will only be through Islam. We have to understand this. This till the Day of Judgment. Allah says, وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَى شَفَا حُفْرَةٍ مِّنَ النَّارِ فَأَنْقَذَكُمْ مِنْهَا That you were upon the abyss, or the edge of an abyss. You were upon, uh, you were upon the edge of a 
of a pit of fire. مِنْهَا Thereafter Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved you from this fire. So this edge of the fire is the edge uh, or the fire we can say the pit of kufr and shirk, disbelief and sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved the sahaba, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved the followers of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa by means of Islam, by means of hidayah, by means of hidayah. So this, if we want true safety from the real problems and calamities, it will be through through following the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَكُمْ آيَاتِ Allah says, in this way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains to you his ayat, his signs. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَهْتُدُونَ So that you may be rightly guided. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to understand and practice. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا عَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ